Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Brian from USA Cards with a September 2024 Dallas Card Show recap. The Red First Bowman, Bobby Witt Jr., is gone, and the trade nights in Dallas suck. I've talked about this before, and I was hoping it would change. It hasn't. They have just shoved everybody into the bottom corner of the hotel past the front desk, past the restaurant, past the elevators, into what amounts to three or four rooms with glass walls, and, and some of them have big center tables, centerpiece tables. Um, others uh, just have smaller tables that um, everyone has sort of moved apart to have a makeshift uh, dealer spot, but it amounts to a crowded, hot, literally, physically hot, temperature-wise mess. I walked through it for about 10 minutes and was done. Um, I'm debating on whether to continue to get hotel rooms on Saturday nights because the, the, trade, the trade nights are that bad. I don't know if it was a fire marshal rule or if it was just the hotel not being cool with uh, the entire lobby being overrun by drunken card fools because that's what the old trade nights were and those were glorious awesome made the dallas card show the best show in the country but now it just feels like i don't know it feels like sunday school or something and everybody's crowded into these little classrooms and you can't get around back there. Uh, it's just all the big guys that have the big cards that used to set up in the hallways are gone. And it, it basically is just average Joe sitting up back there trying to pedal 30, 50, hundred dollar cards, which there's nothing wrong for that with that, but it's not for me. So unless they make a change, um, I think the Dallas card show is going to start to suffer. With that, I say that, and I show up on Saturday at noon, and the entire garage is sold out. So somebody's going. Uh, I just don't know that people are staying for the trade night. Um, but as always, this show was jam-packed with action. Uh, lots of interesting developments along the way. Let's start with the Witt Jr. trade. So... If you followed this channel at all, you know about, well, right before the baseball season started, a um, former student of mine pulled a red, true Bobby Witt Jr. I'll show you here. First Bowman Auto out of, out of a jumbo box that he bought for $700. We went and had it graded, came back in 8.5, had a little bit of surface issues. And uh, he's been fielding offers ever since. I put it on my eBay to help him get eyeballs on it. I've had all kinds of people come out and offer all kinds of different offers. One of the sticking points for him was that he wanted, he wanted to do cash because he's only 14. He doesn't have a bank account. That complicates things. He doesn't have a PayPal. doesn't have a Venmo. Venmo doesn't have a Zelle. Um, so the offers he was getting initially were all electronic. And so he was holding out for, you know, a cash offer and the cash offers he did get were just not anywhere near where he wanted to be. Well, Bobby ends up having an amazing MVP type season. I mean, just really has established himself as, as one of the top two, three guys in the game. And so as he held this card, it just started going up and up and up and up. Um, we had a 30K offer, but it was going to be a Zelle payment or a PayPal payment. So he sort of chewed on that and um, ultimately passed on it. This was about a week ago. Brought the card to the show. And he ended up working out a deal with Breakers Row. You might be familiar with Breakers Row. I think they're pretty known in the hobby space. Um, but he ended up getting about 30K value for it, half cash, half cards. So I'll show you the cards that he got. And 
yeah, and I'll tell you how I think he did, and then I'll show you the cards that I got, and we'll try to keep this thing at around 20 minutes. So let's start with the cards that he got. So I've shown you what the red wit looks like, just gorgeous. So he got a 2017 Mahomes Prism rookie. All the Mahomes rookies are silver, as they were that year. Um... Guy had a 4,800 sticker on it. That's about what they've been doing. Interestingly, there were two alt, uh, were they, no, not alt. They were on alt, they were PWCC comps. They were auctions and they said still pending or pending or something, but they showed, they showed completed and they ended at like 41 and 42. Um, but we, we, and I say we, uh, me and the owner of the card, because I was helping him um, sort of negotiate this deal. We decided to take the Mahomes at the 4800 just because uh, it was a card that he that he wanted. Uh, I think he's ultimately going to try to move it, but he was comfortable being in it. He likes Mahomes. He's a Kansas City guy, Royals, Chiefs, and it was the first big Mahomes he's ever owned. So that was the first card that he brought back. He's mostly a baseball guy. Um, so he, he got two really nice baseball cards and it's not a great picture here, but it, it, I think you can tell what it is. It's a Juan Soto first Bowman refractor men gym has a $3,200 sticker on it. It does have a nice auto. A lot of these, um, first Bowman Sotos have, have light autos on that long, uh, line on the J that separates the top and the bottom name. Sometimes that can get light. This is a perfect auto here. So incidentally, uh, when you're looking at these Juan Soto autos in particular, sometimes, um, you know, a BGS 9510 would be preferred to a PSA 10 that might have a light auto. That's one uh, instance where the BGS auto grades come in nicely. So, um, I believe we got this at, I think it was 2,800 is where we landed uh, value-wise on this uh, Men Gym Juan Soto First Bowman Refractor Auto. And then he brought back another First Bowman Refractor Auto of another amazing player. This one, a 2014 Mookie Betts First Bowman True. Uh, Refractor Auto, another Min Gym, uh, has a $2,200 sticker on it. I think we comped this out at 18. So two nice first Bowman Refractor Autos and a Mahomes Prism PSA 10. And then he also got this Paul Pierce, 05 Upper Deck exquisite collection Paul Pierce scripted swatches 550 on this this was kind of a deal closer like Brendan was looking for a little extra value the guy wasn't willing to give it in cash so he took it in cards to close the deal he's a Boston Celtics PC guy and wanted a nice Paul Pierce auto so he got this PSA 7 uh, he also brought back another baseball card. This one's nice. The 2001 Topps Chrome Albert Pujols. Now this sticker's for $14.50, but we comped it, I believe at $8.80, I think is where we landed. Somewhere around there, somewhere around 900 bucks. And then he received one more card, but I'm gonna wait to show you that because I actually traded for it. And so it's in this stack. But um, yeah, he got um, half in cash, a uh, hundred odd bills and half in cards. And so, um, he was on cloud nine. I've been there too. You know, when you make a humongous sale at the Dallas card show and, uh, you walk around with cash and you just feel like you're on the biggest shopping spree. Uh, in interestingly, he did not buy anything, um, after this. I think he might've bought a couple like smaller cards and then immediately flipped them so he's definitely a businessman at heart. Um, and I'm sure he's gonna move all of these at some point. And he'll probably get to really close to 30K in cash once he does. So um, 
kudos to you, uh, kid, for hanging on to this card and letting Bobby go out and earn you a bunch of money because he certainly did. What a season he's having and what a card that card was. It'll always be a memory. Now let's get into what I got. <clears throat> okay, so I bought a... I bought a Dallas Card Show VIP pass, which gets you in for all the days. You save a little bit of money. And this show, they were giving out these Paul Skeens cards. I don't know why Paul Skeens. I like Paul Skeens, but he has nothing to do with Dallas. He's um, featured in a card with the Dallas skyline. Now, I know that's the Dallas Card Show logo, but just an interesting player choice here. Um, would have been cool to get, I don't know if they had the whole, if they had access to all the major league ball players or if they had access to some of the basketball players, would have been cool to get like a Luca or a Kyrie card, but Paul Skeens it is. I just thought that was interesting. Um, and let's start with the first pickup of the show was this, this Derek Lively Blue Ice, which is down about half of where it was in the playoffs. So I got a great price on this, off-season price. I was tempted during the playoffs, especially when he was playing so well, to go out and snag this, but I knew better. <laughs> Probably something I would have done in the old days, but I knew better and was able to stay patient and then go grab it on the opening weekend of football season, which makes this card, you know, a really nice afterthought card when everyone's chasing football quarterbacks. So I picked this up and then this came later, but it goes so well with this that I might as well show it now. So these are the first, the two first round draft picks that the Mavericks had in 2023. Lively, and Omax Prosper, both blue ice. Uh, I think this one's a pop one. This this has to be like a pop 10, maybe. Very low pop. These are out of 125. Um, got them both. I think this was 75 bucks and this was 350. So uh, these will just get tucked away into my Mavericks PC and hopefully Omax will have a breakout year. And hopefully, Lively will just continue to do what he's been doing because he's been he's been really good for the Mavericks. So looking forward to that. Let's see what's next. I might sh save that. Save that. Let's go here next. So I was really looking hard for. Randy Moss stuff. And I did see while we're at it, I saw this gold kaboom Randy Moss had a 6K sticker on it. Last comp was 24 or 5. I asked him if he'd do 45 because I had the cards to sell to get, you know. The, the, the trade, basically to turn it into a trade, I had the cards to move and uh, he countered at five and I just count, I just kind of was like, eh, I think I'm good. I don't even think I need this uh, gold kaboom, although it was insanely nice. Just trying to stay focused more on the early years of Randy's career in the late 90s, more rare inserts than going chasing gold kabooms. So I think I dodged a bullet there. I was just infatuated with, with the gold. I think it was putting a spell on me. But this is gold too. This comes out of the 98 Fleer Brilliance. It's the gold, not the, not the 24 karat gold, just the standard gold, 61 out of 99 on the Randy Moss. I actually got this for under the last comp. So I was really happy to get this. Kind of scratched my Randy Moss itch. And I only picked up three cards. Well, I guess five if you count those two Maverick cards. But we're getting down to the end here. 
see what all that is. Okay, yep, yep. Let's go here next. So here was my other significant pickup. This is a pop, I think, 15 for the Peyton Manning 98 Finest Rookie Refractor with coating PSA 10. This is my first Manning card, but as I've been chasing Moss stuff, I've, you know, they're the same year and they have a lot of the same nicer parallels and nicer rookie cards. So I've been seeing all the Manning stuff, but what sold this for me was this. The coating is still there. I am a sucker for finest cards, for finest refractors with the coating in a Gem Mint 10 grade. Reminds me a lot of, let me cover this one up, this. So I pulled this out just to kind of show you. Both 98 finest, one basketball, one football, both with the coating still on. And both with the coating placed sort of, you know, in a similar place on both. So, um... There's one of the Mannings on eBay for 12K flat. And yeah, I didn't, the, nowhere near that one for this. I got a really good price on this actually. So between these two cards, I was happy. Two 1998 cards, tough gets, you know. I was really happy to pick this up. The guy said he had just picked it up at uh, Fanatics Fest. Um, so, and he told me that that's where a lot of the best cards he'd seen in a long time were, were at Fanatics Fest. So I'm thinking Fanatics Fest might be, you know, a, a collector's show, a show for collectors where you go to find the nicest, rarest stuff, you know, and it seemed to be mostly modern, although there were some very really nice vintage cards there as well. So um, those four have been the pickups so far, right? From the Dallas card show, you got these four. Now I'll show you what I traded um, to get one of Brendan's cards that he got in the wit. So he wanted a nice wit back right and he didn't the guy that he traded didn't have any nice wits so i told him i would trade him this wit for my collection which is about a 2600 2800 card and i gave him 500 cash okay so you got this wit and 500 cash for a player and a card i didn't know what card i wanted i knew i wanted something nice though because he's got a lot of autos and I knew I wanted a game used and I'm talking about Larry Bird so this comes out of 2013-14 National Treasures it's called um, tre uh, Treasured Tags yeah sorry that's what it's called Treasured Tags it's game used ready to see it here we go. Boom. Look at that thing, man. Got the LB. I, I'm assuming this comes off his shorts or something. Like his initials are there. And it looks like it's a tag. Of course, it says treasured tags. Has a nice bold auto on it. It's out of five. Already got the USA card sticker on it. It's really clean for a thicker card. But like I said, I've been looking for a nice bird and I found one. So I made a play for it. And yeah, that pretty much wraps up my Dallas card show. But I have one more card to show you. One more card to show you. And before I show you, let me have a, a second here to shout out a couple people. I met a really great guy in the side room, Roundtree underscore 13 cards, who had an insanely um, 
gorgeous showcase. I'll show it to you here with all kinds of amazing um, late 90s short print parallels like these. Uh, 24 karat golds here. There's a couple essential credentials here. There's a star of rubies, Mario, Mariano Rivera here. There is a really nice Warren Sapp precious metals that I wanted so bad. I, I've been trying to get a, a Warren, a nice Warren Sapp card, but he had trade only on it. He said he would only trade it for something from that set, you know, um, from that, um, precious metal gems set. So of course I don't have any PMGs. So I had to just admire that card, but he was just in the side room, the starlight room, just tucked away. You'd never know this massive case of, um, gorgeous nineties inserts is back there. Uh, but, um, and then I want to also say what's up to, uh, Farley's cards, uh, Farley's cards um, was in a different location, but I walked past his table. He stopped me. He said hello. He um, talked to my son and talked to the the uh, other guys we were there with. I tell you what, man, Farley is just good people. So um, th thanks for making us feel like uh, I don't know, like you. I mean, definitely remembered us and. You remember that my son collected one piece and I don't know, man, it's the little things sometimes that are so cool. And Farley definitely um, does good with those little things. So shout out, brother. I appreciate you. Um, and then lastly, I have one final card to show you. And it's controversial to say the least, but I had to do it. I had to do it. And I had this video in mind when I picked it up. Because I thought to myself, even if this card isn't worth 10 cents, <laughs> it'll be it'll make for one heck of a story on my show recap. So I actually paid 100 bucks for this. Um, but about two years ago, it was doing 20K. And normally it would check all the boxes for the type of card that I like, except this player is no longer in the league because he was charged uh, with sexually abusing a 14 year old girl. Now that's not cool. I'm not supporting that at all. But what I am supporting is the example of how we can go really hard into some of these players and put a lot of energy and time and money into some of these guys. And we have no idea what kind of life they're living outside of the playing field or the court or whatever it is. Because um, this player right here really screwed a lot of collectors. That is Wanda Franco. The True Blue PSA 10 First Bowman Auto with a confirmed sale of $20,000 back in, I believe, in 2022. Paid 100 bucks for it. It's a pop. I think it's a pop 15. Um, I think the last recorded public sale is like $3,500. Um, but, yeah, I mean... It is what it is, I guess. Um, arguably one of the best. I mean, there were guys that were playing on the Rays with him saying that he was the best baseball player they'd ever seen play. Um, no one can, can deny his talent. I don't think there's any shot he comes back and plays. But what a flash in the pan he was. And for a true blue color match for 100 bucks. I had to. So, yep, that does it. Dallas, fix your trade nights because you're going to start losing, folks. And um, congrats to Breakers Row for getting the red Bobby Witt Jr. for giving my guy his deal, the deal that he wanted, the deal that nobody else seemed to be too interested in giving him. Uh, glad he held 
uh, firm and got what he wanted finally. And to let that be a lesson to anybody that ever hits a big card. Don't, uh, don't make that final move until you know that you're going to be happy with whatever you're taking back. And if you believe in the player, you believe in the card, sometimes it pays off to hold on to it for a little bit. Not too long now, but just a little bit. Dallas, September 2024, was real. It wasn't a movie, though. I don't like that phrase. It was real life, but it was uh, it was fun. And I'm so tired right now. Got to get up at 4.30 for cross country. Thanks for hanging out. Appreciate it. Let me know how your Dallas show went if you attended. And let me know, are you with me on the trade night? Do they need to fix it? Because I'm worried that the trade night's going to be ghost town soon if they don't. All right, see you on the next one, guys. Later.